special film events. It's under the umbrella of our Steve Tisch Cinema Center. And um, we're really thrilled tonight to have this event here in our venue. Uh, we offer this house to the whole community. And so we welcome different ethnic groups and religious groups and as you'll see, uh, uh, different cultural events in our community. And tonight, this is such an important and compelling screening. This is something that has to be emblazoned in our consciousness of telling the story, the true story, and never allowing the truth to be extinguished. And that's what tonight, to a great measure, is about. And it's my great honor to uh, welcome a couple of people who are going to come up and say a few words. Uh, firstly, uh, Scooter Braun, who uh, contributed enormously to the music and entertainment industry, a major activist against anti-Semitism, and he's got a special announcement to make. And one of my dearest friends, New York Times best-selling author, the founder of Justice for Women International and Children, United Nations, uh, the very special Daphna Zyman. And, and, and as usual, Daphna brought her own fan club tonight. So uh, welcome everyone, and we hope you'll carry the message of tonight out with you and uh, post it and let everyone know what you saw and how it impacted you. Thank you very much. My goodness, if every temple and every theater had Rabbi Baron at the helm, I think we would be such a great community. Please give him a huge hand. television, we've seen the result of intolerance and hate. Just this weekend, we saw the attempt assassination because of intolerance and hate. And here we are tonight, and we've gathered together because every single one of you is a gatekeeper for the future of our children. Here, locally and globally. Tonight, we have brought together many cultures and many religions, particularly representative of the Jewish religion, the Muslim religion, women groups, and so many others that have an important voice in the entertainment industry as well, because media carries our voices. Co-hosting tonight with me is a person who has made a huge impact on the entertainment industry and the music industry, but that's not why I invited him here tonight. Scooter Braun stands at the helm of where we all need to move, to move towards. When he sees the wrong, he actually makes every effort to do something about it. Whether what he's done about the hurricanes, or what he's done for Make-A-Wish, or what he's done when there was terrorism incidents outside the Ariana Grande concert in Manchester. Scooter Braun has now, when he has seen what happened at Nova, he took the helm again and decided that it's not going to stop there. And he's going to tell you what he's actually doing about it. So I don't want to steal his words. But it takes People are scooter. It takes one to make a huge change in the world. Just one. And each one of you can be one in a combination of many. And all together, 
we can have such a huge impact. Because what has happened on October 7th is below the tipping point of humanity. When girls are raped and mutilated as a way of calling warfare on a country, that's somebody else's daughter. It's somebody else's sister. It's some father's crying eyes and mother. And that is intolerable. Such horrific situations should never occur on the global map. So I want to thank you all for responding in such a way by being here together tonight. You're becoming a part of the pathway towards a better day tomorrow. I particularly want to thank some of the sponsors tonight. Stand with us, Ros Rostin and Esther here. Thank you so much. Women's Voices Now, Heidi is here. Thank you so much. Couldn't have done it without you. The Muslim women organizations that are here tonight, thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart. Ross Kemper and Linda Kakorian Kemper, thank you for sponsoring. Michael Thornton, thank you so much for sponsoring tonight as well. And Patty Glazer, thank you for coming forward and supporting this whole situation. You're an angel. And we have somebody here who against all odds and against many threats, he's here to talk truth. And that's Ahmad, who is actually right here. Thank you, Ahmad. Ahmad's entire family was actually killed during the Gaza-Israel war. He is, was born in Gaza and he is here tonight because he couldn't tolerate what Hamas did on October 7. And that truth will ring forever. Thank you so much for your support and your love and your and with that, let me introduce my friend, somebody I truly admire, Scooter Brown. Um, never follow a best-selling author with remarks. Um, those are incredibly well-prepared and beautiful, and I am going to wing it, and my brother's in the front row. Uh, I first want to just thank every single one of you for coming. Um, could have done anything with your Monday night, and you chose to come and witness an incredibly powerful, a very upsetting, and a very important film. Uh, and I hope for those of you who have not seen this, what you see tonight uh, is on YouTube. And it's there because after talking with my friend Cheryl Sandberg, who couldn't be here, who's an incredibly brave and powerful person who you will see in the film, they put it on YouTube because it's completely accessible to everyone, and there's no excuse for someone to not take that time to see it. When I, uh, when I met the survivors of Nova, it was at a healing camp with my brother Sam, who's here uh, in Israel. We arrived in the morning at 7 a.m., and we were at a kibbutz by 8. And we saw things that no one should ever see. Uh, we saw devastation. Unfortunately, the blood was still on the walls. The smell, we'll never forget. And then we went from those communities to the Nova Field. And we kind of expected to see what we saw, unfortunately. We, we knew this kind of evil was in the world because of our family background and the stories of the Holocaust and my grandmother being in Auschwitz and my grandfather being in Dachau and my unfortunate experience with someone who had the same ideology as Hamas who committed a terrorist attack at one of our shows in Manchester. But when we arrived on the fourth day, we went to the Nova Healing Camp. 
and we saw kids 20 to 24 years old. Many who had lost friends, who had witnessed the things you're going to see, who gave interviews, and they were laughing and crying and singing music and doing therapy together, writing songs. And I sat with one young lady who had lost all of her friends. She was the only survivor out of the group of friends. And she said to me, she goes, you know, you're here, you understand, but if I was out there in the world and I didn't know, maybe I would hate me too. And it was the first time on the trip where I became incredibly angry. Because what happened to those kids at a music festival, the same music festival where our families would have gone to Coachella or Stagecoach or Governor's Ball, it was truly a music festival and these kids were murdered as they were running away, as they were hiding in porta potties, as they were trying to escape in cars. And the world just abandoned them. The world was quiet, the world was silent. The industry I'd given my life for 23 years wasn't saying anything. And I was confused because when we had a terrorist attack in Manchester, 22 people were killed and many more maimed and injured. And within two weeks, the entire world rallied behind us. And we threw One Love Manchester just two weeks later, which was the biggest concert in the world, broadcast on every major network, every social media site, and every artist from the entire community showed up. Six hour concert with the biggest names in music. And here I was standing in front of these kids where 380 and now the total is over 400 were killed. 40 were taken hostage. It's the biggest music massacre in history and no one was saying anything. So we went on a quest to start helping and we brought the Nova Music Exhibit to New York City. Um, this exhibit is the original tents, the original cars that were burned, the lost and found, the footage that both Hamas themselves broadcasted and those kids as they were running away trying to get to their families broadcasted on their phones. And the way we put together this exhibit was very different from what happened in Tel Aviv because everyone in Israel already knew what had happened, had experienced it. But we wanted to do something here that made people understand that Nova and what happened to those kids and what happened here and what you're going to see, these were innocent people. And it is absolutely inexcusable that we as a world and as a community can't come forward and denounce this behavior. And I am glad that, special announcement, I've said it before, but we are officially opening in uh, mid-August in Los Angeles, the Nova Music Center. Running that exhibit through October, and I can tell you there's nothing political about it. Uh, it is truly about a music festival, and the way we're doing the tickets, the same way we did in New York, two to eight dollars just to cover across the fees, and half the time we're going to be letting in people for free. Um, because we don't want to give anyone an excuse not to witness this and see themselves and their humanity. And that is kind of why I'm here today. My brother, uh, friends, inv excuse me, invited me. I've seen the film, and like I said, you're all brave, and I'm honored to see this many people here to witness it on a Monday night. Sexual violence and rape should never be used in warfare, should never be used at all, and it should never be excused. Um, unfortunately, with all the evidence, uh, the Daphne's help and others, the UN finally acknowledged it, but it took six months for them to say the evidence was credible. And in that time, we saw many of our own politicians deny this. And I, I wanna be clear on the main reason I'm here. 